Right now, you can look at the markets, and you, I don't think you can really correlate that to the political season. I mean, today, you know, the residential market's a little flat, um, and I think probably the office leasing market's probably a little flat at these times. Right. People aren't making those kind of decisions. Now, is that because of politics, or is that because of the economy? But do you have a view? I mean, there is a view that the election unto itself invariably slows the economy down. Things just sort of, right, people press the pause button. Right. The mergers are slower. The financial markets, I mean, just... Right? Yeah, I would say that's probably true. Yes. Okay. I think that we that we feel it. And I think that, particularly given the nature of this election, where the, the positions are so extreme that no one knows really what's coming, you know this better, as well as we do, right. that uncertainty is always a negative feature. The other thing that's happened, at least in New York City, on residential real estate, and I'm curious where both you come out on this, the high end clearly has gotten hit, but it's starting to trickle, it feels like, all the way down. No, I mean, it's very strong in, at the... Uh, you know, the middle part of the market, the lower end of the market, I mean, the lower end is still pretty high in relation to anywhere right. else, you know, but something like $1,500. Oh, reasonable, unreasonable, right. You know, I mean, today, like in New York, which would be, you know, the highest prices anywhere else, like 1500 to 2000 a foot, that market for new uh, condos is very strong. Um, so the middle market is, in New York is, is very strong. Uh, there's probably a little overbuilding in the larger apartments, and there's probably more apartments over... $10 million and above than there's ever been before. Um, but the market, you know, it's in that area, it's pretty flat. Right. You know, the thing, and, and Steve uh, sort of built his career in affordable housing. That's where it began, right? Sure. And I, I have to say, I was out at, in Greenpoint in Brooklyn the uh, day before yesterday, and uh, affordable complex, George Klein, Park Towers building, and they've had a 1,000 applications for every one apartment. I mean, it, so that it's really about price. Right. And I think the way you've adjusted the Hudson Yards pricing has been reflective of the fact that it's not going to be a billionaire's row mm -hmm. situation. Well, let me ask you a question. We talk about uh, interest rates all the time and how low they are and whether it's creating bubbles. When you look at all of the building, at least it's going on in this city, including, by the way, Hudson Yards, do you look at, and say to yourself that this was a function in large part of a remarkable low interest rate? policy and whether that is is creating a bubble of some sort? Well, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, developers will build if they have the cash. Right. So, you know, and it's really the, the availability of money. Right. And so today there's been a lot of availability money. There's been a lot of interest in real estate because people are looking for yield and they think they can get it in real estate. Uh, so there's been a lot of, you know, rental construction really across right. the country, you know, especially in New York. So I think the rental market's a little soft. I think it'll catch up because right. there really is a demand there. But uh, I think it's more the availability to money right. and real estate in terms of development, not necessarily, you know, purchasing.